Aries, hello and welcome to your weekly reading for the week of November 10th through to the 17th. Let's make sure that the work that we're doing is in integrity with the entirety of our being. We have Mars now that has moved into our fifth house of Leo. And at the time of my recording this, it's at zero degrees in the sign of zero. Scorpio season, ruled by Pluto, giving us that outer limit, that outer boundary. And it's funny because there might be a lot of changes happening. We This is the season of our eighth house. So sex, death, transformation, and rebirth, all on the table, all up for grabs to be reassessed, to um, delve into. And we have a full moon this week in our second house, the sign of Taurus, what we have to work with. And maybe, just maybe, you guys have been blessed with a lot of tools to get the work that you need done, but you haven't been using them in the ways that would best serve to get those those tools done, those things taken care of. We have the moon and the king of earth. So there's an emotional level of security that we've manifested, but there's also the next steps to manifesting a heightened level of emotional security, maybe around new things that we value, new things that um, make us feel good, they make us feel at home, they make us feel safe within ourselves to be who we are. We have the eight of fire. So just like Virgo, things are going to be moving rapidly ahead um, likely before we close out this year with a mars retrograde and just because mars is retrograde doesn't mean that things stop happening i think that we just have new ways of getting things done and we have the ten of water these ways of getting things done will be more emotionally fulfilling you won't feel like you're just turning out work that is meaningless void of purpose um i have the sense that there will be a lot better um, return on that investment as well. We have the High Priestess. So it's interesting, um, the Moon card and the High Priestess both came out, but they both are associated with Archangel Haniel. Important psychic insights, events behind the scenes, release fears that hold you back, listen to your intuition, have patience, consider carefully what you want before acting. So this, this does indicate maybe with um, an actual partner, a sacred partner, King of Earth, if you are a masculine energy, um, this could be relating to your um, counterpart who might have a feminine nature, regardless of what gender you guys actually are. Um, you'll have some intuition about maybe how to move your story forward. A lot of my insights have been coming through with meditation. It's something that I can't speak more highly of. I do believe that Sadhguru is my guru in a past life or we worked together before because he has an app and I'm just taking it in. It's just something that's naturally a part of my day, naturally a part of what I'm doing with my time. And you guys might come to find that that introspection of morning pages, something I speak to as well, um, or meditation will get you in a place where your mind is aligned to take steps that deepen your connectivity to what it is you have to do so that you can enjoy what you want to enjoy with more grace, ease, more pleasure. We have the fertile void, inner winter, rest, patience, potency, secret beginning. So there's wisdom to keeping certain things we have on our plate sacred to keeping it limited to those who we know can support us in our mission, um, who don't um, doubt our skills. They don't doubt our potential to get things done. And with a new signature, with a new level of energy, with a new grace, with a new finesse, um, there have been many moments where this year I've found the <laughs> my creative edge, like the limit to how far I was willing to go with something. But then there was always some level of commitment that I wasn't maybe even aware of at the time that drew me back in. So, you know, I do feel that we manifest in two-year cycles. We have let it go, release the past, forgive, soften, move forward. So with what happened two years ago, maybe in 2022, you have to let go of. You have to let go of um, that edge, that creative edge, that level of output or that turnaround, that willingness to just release anything and to earn lots of money for it or to be so shy about things that maybe aren't yet generating income that you hold them close to your chest and keep them a little bit too sacred to where you kind of like they get dusty. There is a level of people who are already heightened in their awareness and they're looking for people to open up, share the depths of themselves, um, all that they know. And while it might take a while for us to get this work out into the world, it's best to start now to invest 
in this emotional fulfillment that we can experience now it's tangible now but it, the outcome will be again likely in a two-year cycle while we can manifest things very quickly if our heart is open and aligned to the manifestation there are things that naturally and inevitably take more time they require patience and perseverance enthusiasm but also focus so we need to just be in the moment to understand how it feels to achieve small steps forward of progress and then to also look around us and see what's oddly familiar what's oddly easy for me to do that some people say oh this is so hard for me and it's like no this comes naturally to me i can get this done without any qualms i can let go and then also i think letting go of maybe in the past if you've done certain work that again easy for you hard for others like today I had this realization that I'm living a dream of mine but many dreams at the same time it's just a matter of understanding how much I wanted something and how it's so perfectly in my lap now it's a part of my option of things to tackle each day to address each day to show up and present myself to with a willingness to make improvements to grow to expand so the Five of Cups, um, for us, Mars is in our fifth house now. And because of this retrograde, it feels like there will be some cups we have to turn over, some emotional review that we have to do to make sure that we're still um, coming from the heart. This is also a message from Scorpio is that they're going to learn to communicate from the heart. And this is our eighth house season. So there could be levels of heart centered communication that we're just now learning to grasp and to dance with um, in places where we were really formal. We had to be. It was like the status quo. You had to show up. You had to present yourself in this specific way or else you wouldn't be taken seriously. So it's time that we address those potential shortcomings. They're just human shortcomings. It's like operating in a way that is systematic and takes us away from the true nature of our being, this light that we are, Aries. I hope I'm making sense because it feels like a lot of this is an intuitive journey this week and namely so. The sun is in the second decan of Scorpio, the second decan of our eighth house. So it's dredging up the past that we have to let go. We'll know intuitively what needs more integrity from us and what really is just fine as it is. It's fine to keep doing and persevering and pursuing, trusting that as you fulfill it, the tasks that you have to fulfill, this full moon is going to replenish you. It's going to show you where you could take things more easily, where you can innovate, where you can update systems, and how you can share what you are growing within yourself. And then what needs more time? Rhea Flow. So I would say to trust that Whatever is coming in easy peasy with, with grace, without a lot of pushing and effort, that's where you need to just continue allowing it to come out. But there are things that like, if it feels like rubbish and you were just putting it out and you're like, I hate how this feels, there's a level of integrity that needs to be reconciled. So let's see what Rhea has to say, 44. Do you notice how, when you're in alignment with the universe, everything in your life just seems to flow? The Greek goddess Rhea, whose very name means flow and ease, comes to let you know that you're entering such a time. While the flow state is not permanent for most people, it's a beautiful feeling that allows you to lose yourself in the rhythm. It's as if you're traveling down a magic stream where ideas and insights pour through you from a vast source of information that is gifted to you. So you won't have to put out rubbish and earn like $150,000. It's not going to happen like that. You're going to get to feel like every single step is so fulfilling, soul fulfilling. And you can trust that this is something that might not be easy for people to flow in this way, but it's being gifted to you. So let's not confuse ourselves with the source of it, but to be at the fountain and to sit from the stream and to observe, to watch and see how we're growing, how we're leveling up, how we're coming into our heart. And the heart is this cavern of treasures that we now know, oh, I can, I can actually pull from there and put this into my work. It doesn't have to be so cardboard, so structured, so rigid, um, so fixed, so outward. I can really develop an inward gesture and present this in a way that feels fulfilling to me. And I think that this is Mars just making its way out of Cancer. So we're still feeling that 
calming depth, that expansive energy of Mars hitting 29 degrees Cancer and opposing, opposing Pluto, helping us to get out of our emotional waters, what was not fulfilling to us on a soul level. It requires trust to flow, and the goddess Rhea ensures your boat will never capsize as you move from a slow stream to a rapid river. Yeah, there are things that are picking up, and we, just like Virgo, we have to understand that we can do um, less with more impact. We can put fewer things out into the world with a lot more impact if we are just in a state of contentment um, and not contention. We don't want to have this energy of, oh, I didn't get this outcome, and oh, I have to put out this filth and they're going to pay me so much money to do it. Uh, it's like, how can we shift and invest and wisely operate from the heart without feeling like, oh no, it's, it's all going to go to rubbish. I'm going to lose everything because it's not going to happen, especially if you flow from the heart. Alignment message. Sometimes you may find yourself in a stagnant state where nothing seems to be moving. The flow between you and the universe is blocked. This can happen when you fear that your desires won't be met, and also when things are moving quickly and seemingly in a different direction from what you expected. The goddess Rhea reminds you that when you trust the flow state, you'll find an opportunity to flow around a bend you've not discovered yet. Her alignment task for you is to let go of the branch and allow yourself to be carried on the river of your life into parts of the river you have not yet traveled through. Oh, there's a Buddhist con that says um, what was lost in the river is also found in the same river. And it feels like there are parts of the live stream that live stream and maybe live stream. Maybe you want to start doing lives on, you know, Twitch or YouTube or Instagram. And you're like, how does this work? How do people, you know, entertain from a live perspective? And it's like, you know, sometimes people just want this dialed in, emotionally available person who's willing to open up and share with them. And it could be in any circumstance. People could just be laying around wishing they had a friend and you go live on Instagram and they're like, oh great, now I can watch so-and-so share about their life and it doesn't feel like work and it's impactful. And then you get like donations from people if you have that stuff up in, in a link tree or something like that or, you know, PayPal me, whatever. Rhea's task for you is to let go of the branch and allow yourself to be carried on the river of your life into parts of the river you have not yet traveled through. She will ensure that although you will experience unfamiliar and unexpected things, releasing the form of it all, so the outcome, will only result in the discovery of magic and miracles. Let go and allow the flow to do the rest. You'll be amazed at how effortless life becomes. That's cool. Good reading, Aries. So if you guys want to delve into this, Mars Day, Tuesday, let's look at that. We'll delve into Mars Day. It feels like that's going to be a day where you'll you'll do a, a double take. It We have the full moon happening on Friday, 24 degrees, one second, Taurus. On Tuesday, Mars will be at two degrees, Leo. And I believe by the end of the week, Mars moves to three degrees, Leo. It's moving very slow, preparing for this retrograde. So um, on Mars Day... The sun will be at 20 degrees Scorpio. So this might be where, you know, the floodgates open. Mars will be at 2 degrees. Sun will be at 20 degrees. Um, past life wounds. Wounds from this life that are coming up in dreams. I've, I'm in Aries rising and some dreams of mine have been bringing things to the surface for me to hold in meditation or, you know, my human garage maneuvers and forgive. You might come to find that too and it might ease up your flow. You might feel like you have a lot less of emotional burdens to carry around come Mars Day, or Mars Day might be the push to release what you haven't yet released. So I would go into, again, I said the same for Scorpio, where is Uranus in your chart? What's your second house? If you're an Aries rising, it will be Taurus, but look at the degree where it starts. And then I would advise for you to check out Elias Lindsdale. If you want to dive into the degrees or Sabian symbols, he does Chandra symbols. And this will help you to start seeing themes that you can address through, through journaling, through morning pages, um, through holding it in your mind, and then focusing on your day-to-day -day life, and then maybe journaling at the end of the day. Uh, voice notes, any way of getting down your thoughts, because we still have Jupiter in the third house, and it's opposing Mercury this week. so. Communication might be really helpful um, if you 
have been waiting to talk to someone about something and this is the week um, that you get to interact in a way that's not like a formal setting, it's dialed in, it's more expansive. Again, lives, a great way to start opening up your ability to communicate from the heart. People will love it from you, Aries. So have a great rest of your week. Again, check out where Uranus is in your chart, within your second house, where that house starts. Astro.com is a great resource for that. And until next time, all of my Aloha Aries.